Hello friends. This video is the first part of a small walkthrough style transfer with deep neural networks. We present here one fast style transfer method. And in a second video, we will play with it. So, what is style transfer? The general idea is to take two images, a content image and a style image, and produce a new image that reflects the content of the first, but the artistic style of the other. Here, we choose to build a neural net based on the research paper titled, Perceptual Losses for Real-Time Style Transfer in Super Resolution. In this version, the neural net is trained and dedicated to one style image. Once trained, we just need to provide content images as input to the net. The processing is fast enough to apply style transfer to a video stream in real time. In order to explain how style transfer works, Let's introduce first another popular type of neural networks in computer vision, the classifier. The job of the classifier is to take one input image, and to predict what is the main object present in the image. Typically, such a network is trained on millions of images with objects from thousands of categories. Let's describe in more detail the classifier. It is composed of a sequence of two blocks. The first block analyzes the image and detect meaningful features into it. For instance, in this picture, such features could be two prick pointy ears, two eyes with vertical pupils, an area of brownish gray fur, some black spots on large white area. The second block then act as a classifier on top of the features detected, and assign probabilities for the input image being a cat, a Dalmatian, or anything else. Of course, the net doesn't really know what an ear or an eye is, but by seeing lots of them in images, it has learned to detect them as features. For style transfer, the classification block is not useful, so we discard it, and just keep the feature extraction part. Let's zoom further. Actually, the feature extraction block is a sequence of several layers, where the output of a layer is the input of the following one. Each layer itself can be seen as a feature extractor. The closer to the input image the layer is, the lower level the features detected are. For instance, the first layer on the left detects small edges in the image. The second layer combine them into corners or curves. Maybe the third layer combine the corners and curves in circles, rectangular forms or textures, and so on. Finally, we reach the last layer on the right which can detect high-level features like ears or eyes. Now, imagine there is a spy who doesn't have access to the input image, but he would like to guess its content. The only informations the spy has about that image are the features extracted at one given layer, let's say the first layer. Can the spy reconstruct the original image? To do this, the spy gives in random noisy images input to the net. The net extracts the features for this artificial image. Features are just numbers. They can be represented by vectors in a high dimensional space. And we can calculate a distance between the features of the content image and the features of the spy's image. In the research paper, this distance is called feature reconstruction loss. From the distance value, the spy knows how to slightly modify the random image in order to lower the distance during the next iteration. Let's repeat the process again. The modified image is given as input to the net, which calculates new features, which hopefully, gets closer to the features of the content image. The spy then again updates his image accordingly. By iterating this process a few times, the spy finally constructs an image having almost the same features as the content image. We can apply the same image reconstruction technique for the other layers. This is what we get. Not surprisingly, as we progress in the layers, we lose more and more pixel information, but notice that the high-level content, like the shape of the cat or the Dalmatian spots, is preserved, even in the last layer. In the spy experimentation, we have defined a feature reconstruction loss between two images, and we were able to construct an image similar in content to a reference image by minimizing this loss. When it comes to style, we can in a similar way, 
define a style reconstruction loss. But, instead of comparing the features themselves as we did before, we compare how the features correlate between each other. Like we did for the feature loss, we can construct a new image by minimizing the style loss between this image and the style image. Here, the features extracted by the whole four layers are used. Notice how the image we get preserves the stylistic features of the original image, but not the spatial structure. The next step toward our style transfer system is to define a global reconstruction loss as a weighted sum of the feature loss and the style loss. Now, if we try to determine an image that minimizes this global loss, we finally get what we want, an image with the content of the content image, and the style of the style image. By modifying the weights W1 and W2, we can put more or less style effect on the constructed image. So, the good news is that we have now a method for doing style transfer. The bad news is that it is not fast enough to apply in real time, because the minimization of the loss is a slow iterative process. Fortunately, the research paper brings a clever way to address this problem. The idea is to train a neural network to directly generate the content image into its stylized version. Of course, training a neural net is also solving an optimization problem, but it is done only once for a given style image. Let's describe how to train such a network. At first, the net is randomly initialized, so it is very likely that the first image given as input to the net is transformed in a gibberish image. Never mind. Let's use the feature extraction block we have studied before. We calculate the feature loss between the generated image and the original image. Then calculate the style loss between the generated image and the style image. Combine the two losses to calculate the global loss. Knowing the goal is to minimize the global loss, the net can be updated by applying gradient descent accordingly. Then repeat the same process with tens of thousands of different input images. Eventually, we get a neural net which has learned to generate images with a low global loss. The training is finished. We don't need the feature extraction block anymore, and we can begin to play with style transfer. Please, have a look at some examples on the second video. Thanks for watching.